Today, we're going to make this hallway entry table out of this live edge slab of walnut, but there's a very interesting twist that happens about halfway through. Stick around to see what happens. Today's video is sponsored by Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Let me give you a quick rundown of what we're about to do. I have this slab here of walnut that I got from my local hardwood dealer, KenCraft. They sell hardwoods and live edge boards like you see here, and they ship worldwide. So check them out. They're really cool people. I developed a great relationship with them. I want to cut a nice straight edge along the back here because this is going to sit flush up against the wall. And to do so, we're going to do this at the table saw, but we need to make a jig. And I'm going to use this match fit clamp set. We'll talk about this more later where we can make this jig and then run it through the table saw and get a nice straight cut. I have this eight quarter piece of walnut here that I'm going to square up and turn on the lathe. And I'm going to have a through mortise that's going to come all the way up through the, the top here and then we'll flush that down. I found these cool feet at my local antique store. I've got four of these and it only cost me 10 bucks. I'm going to turn the top part of the leg on the lathe and then this will be the bottom part. Enough talking and more cutting. So let's go. I ran into a safety concern while cutting this on the table saw. As I was pushing this through, the internal pressures of the wood caused it to pinch itself as it went through the blade. I was having a hard time pushing it through the blade and I knew it wasn't going to be safe for me to continue the cut. So I had to stop and finish it off on the bandsaw. Whenever something doesn't feel right, stop what you're doing. The table saw can be a very dangerous thing. I didn't want this pinching back on the blade and kicking back on on me. Even though I have a riving knife here in my table saw, it's just never good to force something through. That's how much spring was in that board. I mean, this is a straight cut here. Of course, I don't get the nice clean cut on the bandsaw as I do on the table saw, but safety first, you got to do what's right. Whenever something doesn't feel right, stop what you're doing. So now I want to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Microjig. You've seen me use their gripper many times over the past couple years. And today we're going to talk about the MatchFit dovetail clamps. So I made this sled with the zero plate guide bars installed on the bottom. And I routed dovetail grooves here in the top to hold the MatchFit clamps. And so here's how it's going to work. I have this slab of walnut, which is much wider than what I need. So I need to cut the back end off of this, but we don't have a straight edge to run up against the fence. So tighten this down. Cool, now we have a nice straight edge on the back of this board. So now that we have that slab cut up, I just wanted to show you more practical everyday use. I have this board that I got from the lumber store and I can see the bottom is not flat. I don't have a joiner, so I'm going to use my sled here with the match fit clamps. And I know that the edge of this sled rides up right against the blade because the blade cleaned this up when we made the sled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this hang slightly over the edge, make sure all parts are hanging over. And I have my clamps that we just used and you'll see that it doesn't fit because I had this set up for the slab. But the cool thing about these clamps is I can reverse this to overhang this way. How cool is that? So that I can clamp that down and now we're good to go. And there we go. I have a nice, perfect edge 
on the board here. So I can use this to replace the joiner that I used to have. So there are times when you want to extend the table saw fence so it's taller. The traditional way to do that is to put a piece of wood on there and then clamp it down with some with, with whatever clamps you have. What happens is when you put them on there, the clamps are in the way. There's a cool solution to this using the match fit clamps. So now we've extended the height of our table saw fence and we have no clamps in the way. A few other ideas you can use these clamps for is extending the height of your bandsaw fence if you have a short fence. You could quickly mount a router table right to your bench and you can also have a drilling jig over on your drill press. Lots of uses for these guys. The cool thing is they are completely out of the way and allow you to do your work. Micro Jig was nice enough to send me an extra pair of these clamps. I will be giving them away. You can visit the link down below on my website. Now let's get back to making this table. I've decided that this is too wide. I want to make it a little bit more narrow because it is a hallway table and I don't want it taking up a lot of room. So we're going to make one more. Next thing I'm going to do is knock the bark off here. Although the bark looks cool, it will have a tendency to like flake off over time. And it's just a, it's a dust trap. And so we're just going to get rid of it. Look at that. So when I got this slab, one of the corners was cut at nearly a 45 degree angle here. I'm not sure why, but what I'm going to do is repeat that over here on the other side. All right, so I have these legs that I found at the antique store. They are an ugly gold, although I do like the vintage look. I like cool vintage look and not ugly ass gold vintage look. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand them down and we're going to paint them white and they would be the bottom of these, these legs. We're going to drill from the top uh, because if there is any blowout, it'll happen underneath. We're going to glue these guys in the holes that we drilled. Now it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good fit. And then when I get some glue on there, that's going to expand a little bit. It's going to be nice and solid. So I've reached a point that I'm not happy about. I hate the legs. I cannot tell you how much I hate the way the look, the legs look on here. This is really disappointing because I was super excited and I thought it was going to look cool. So here's what I think we're going to do. This is a total design change, total like this project change. We're getting rid of the legs. We're going to turn this into a bench. That's what it's going to be. So it's no longer going to be an entryway table. It is going to be a bench. This thing is solid as a rock. Holy cow. Those mortises are great. I could stand on here. No problem. So what I need to do is these little tenons that I made here, I need to chop them off and then we're going to level it out and put some tongue oil on there and we're good. So, Let's chop those guys off. We're, Eric and I, we're in a hot debate because I'm getting ready to cut this little tenon off. I'm going to have you zoom in on that so they can see what's going on here. That's that tenon was supposed to hold that leg. And I was getting ready to cut it off. Eric thinks it looks fine like that and then it's already at a good seat height. So I'm going to drop it down here. I don't know. We still need to level it. I feel like any shorter and it's going to be... Like you're gonna have like a little kid's thing. This is a crazy technique. I barely have my blade above the surface here. I'm gonna use that to get the wobble up. 
There we go, no wobble. So that's a trick I learned from Gary Rogowski. I'm gonna post a link to his video down in the description. Really cool trick, and uh, I think you should check it out. Now it's time to do some final sanding. I'm gonna take a card scraper and clean up the top and then put on a couple coats of tongue oil. Using a scraper, so much faster than using a sander and much less dust in the air too. using tongue oil on here. I'd like to thank my top patrons, Derek Jacobson, Jonathan J. Katz Moses, David Flores, and Nathan Bird. I'll have links to their works down below. If you want to help support me and get involved in the weekly giveaways, visit patreon.com slash And this week, we're giving away these leather keychains that we made a couple weeks ago. I would like to thank Microjig for sponsoring this video. If you want to win a set of these awesome match fit clamps, visit the link down below in the description. I would also like to thank KenCraft for supplying the wood for this project. Visit KenCraftCompany.com. Com. They do ship throughout the United States. Good friends of mine and great people. So this didn't go as planned. Not everything goes as expected, but I do think we made the right decision to turn this into a bench. I'm curious to know what you thought of the legs and what you would have done. Did I make the right decision? Did you like the legs? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope to see some of you in Boston this weekend for the Making It podcast meetup with Jimmy DeResta and Bob Cleggett. I can't believe we are up to 100 episodes of the podcast. I love working with those dudes. Quickly, before we go, I want to point out two videos that I put out recently. One is 13 woodworking projects you can make as Christmas gifts, and another video I put out on my second channel, how well I did at the craft show and how much money I made. It also has a checklist of what you need to take to a craft show if you're going to set up. So I'll have links to those videos down below. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Be safe, find your passion, have fun, and make something. <music>